Father, give God thanks for your life. Wherever you are, thank you very much for coming online. Quickly, we're going to look at uh, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7, and then we're going to do a teaching tonight. Hallelujah. It's always a privilege to be in the presence of the living God. Um, 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter uh, um, 4, verse 7 says that, but we have this treasure in earthen vessel that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. Hallelujah. Which means that in all of us, there are treasures. That is why I believe that whatever is your scar, whatever is your pain, whatever is your experience, it works out in an excellent manner to the glory of God. Hallelujah. Uh, in our country here today, it's very, very hot, <laughs> but we are trying our best. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We give God thanks. So wherever you are, we want to say a big thank you once again. It's always important that when you come into teaching service, we we learn a few things. Now, we began the series early on. We've been talking about uh, be proud of your scars or what your scar says about you. Every one of us have some amount of experience in life, and these experiences uh, speak volumes of your world, the world you live in. So let's go quickly to see what we've got out here. So we defined it early on. We said that a scar aims to, uh, um, uh, um, to show forth your experiences. Any Anybody out there, wherever you are, if you've got any scar, it speaks that the wound is healed. Hallelujah. Yes. A scar, we said that every significant injury in life will leave some foot print on you. Some of us will deal with people who don't have really experiences. That's why it's not every fight that you should fight. It's not everybody that you should get into a fight with because some people don't have the wealth of experience you do. So sometimes when people pick up a fight with you, just step back and tell yourself that you deserve better. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So it's very, very important that your scar speaks so much of you. Now, I believe as a child of God, whatever is your experience, there will always be one or two things that will remind you of where God has taken you from and where God is taking you to. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So let's let's see uh, some of the things that we said that the scar represents. Now your scar as, as uh, in, in its totality is not always injuries. There are many, many forms of it. So what causes it? Disappointment can, can cause a very massive imprint of a scar on you. We also said that sometimes going through life itself, life will cut you so hard. Life is a is a very hard schoolmaster. You know, sometimes when you go through life, it will cut you so deep that you know people sometimes give up. And I'm I'm told that. Uh, people today who are giving up are giving up not because of any man, but just because of general life. They will it will make you throw the towel in. Then we we like we said there are other uh, uh, demonic precipitations as well. Sometimes where you grew up, the towns where you've lived in, the school you went to, uh, the kinds of parents you had, or uh, the experiences of your life can all be a, a great significant to your scar. So the, the, let's go quickly through the benefits of a scar, and we, we, we did last week. Tonight, we want to see how you can turn your scar into a stardom. Hallelujah. How do you turn your scar into great news? We said the benefits of it will be, if you're putting it on slide number 10, if you can, okay. So um, the benefits of it will be every scar has a message. Every one of your scars, your bad experiences, and, and some of the things that you don't want anybody to know, you buried so deep. <laughs> it's all carry messages. Now, a scar is a proof of uh, it's a proof that you've overcome a wound. You know, that is why you just have to be careful. You don't open old wounds. But the scar there is a proof that you were wounded. And by the grace of God, you've come out of the wound. Hallelujah. Yes. Number three, every scar is a badge of honor. Now, I picked this many years ago when I was reading about Caesarean sessions. Now, many, many years ago. And 
every, I think, for the past 10 years or the past number of years, or um, anybody that has gone through cesarean session as moms, with the all got scar somewhere. But it's not to be shameful of it, but it's a badge of honor that you went to war and then you won the war. You went through the process and then you've done that. That's supposed to be number three, not number two. I think this is number two you got. So a scar itself, number four, your body has healed itself and it's a sure sign of healing so your scar is a sure sign that you've been healed if you don't have a scar yet you might have a sore but if you have the scar it means you are healed hallelujah majority of younger moms younger brothers younger sisters sometimes they still carry pain and the pain they carry doesn't mean the wound have been healed but if you your wound is healed, yes, the pain is gone, but it leaves traces or it leaves some kind of an imprint, a danger that this particular part of your life, you went through the valley of shadow of death, and you've come out on the other side, thank you, you've come out on the other side, and you're doing great. So, if your body has healed itself, and it's a sure sign of healing, it means the pain is over hallelujah oh my god wherever you are tonight you've got a bit on your chest that my god 2020 something you went through a very terrible experience but here you are still alive and fire in your bones you know that thing you went through sometimes in the morning as you're walking down the staircase you reminiscing, you going through your mind, and you remember when you were sermon before a group of people, you told you you're going to lose everything. But here you are, still by the grace of God, you've got your life together. It's a scar, but the wound, the pain is over. Let's see number five. Every scar, every scar any man or woman carries makes you unique. Your scars makes you especially all of us in, in any form of life, whether you are an older person, whether you are a younger person, whether you are a bishop, whatever is your category of standing in life, your scar makes you absolutely unique. Okay. Your, everybody's, there's no two scars the same. It is believed that our fingerprints are extremely different from every other human being. As a matter of fact, science have also proven that your, th your tongue, the, 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 the prints on your tongue is also different. Now, that goes for your scars as well. Your scars are different and it makes you unique. I've seen somebody in my own, with my own two eyes, Part of his head is gone, and he's still very, very intelligent. <laughs> so, I've seen somebody that has lost a bit of nose and a bit of ear. I've seen somebody with a very hefty scar on his bike, on his back. Sorry, he fell down from a motorbike, and it's giving him a very severe. And sometimes, when you hear people's story and their scar, you see that we've gone through different, but never allow your scar to disqualify you. Hallelujah. Let's see the next. Let's see number six, some of the benefits of it. Now we said number six, the scar. Your scar is a proof of your fighting spirit. When you see some, especially people who have lived in a very, um, I want to use the word, a uh, very poor environment, especially all of us that were born in Africa, have some scars on our legs, you know. <laughs> Almost all of us, because we went through, sometimes if you have lived in a, a farming community, or maybe if you're a fishmonger, or whether you're selling polo beef, whatever you do in life, whatever is your venture or vocation, your scar proves that you have a fighting spirit. Yes, if some people never failed exam before, yes, some people never failed in a certain experience, they will talk so unnecessarily. But you have gone through the scar, you've gone through the wound, and you have the scar, you have the fighting spirit and I can see every child of God I believe every son and daughter of God who carry some amount of shame in their life of going through some amount of shame in their life it's the proof that you can
can fight. You did not allow the scar, the shame, the wound, the pain to stop you. You woke up in the morning, put your heavy duty lipstick on. You went to work, you still going about your business, but the grace of God, you still alive, you still standing on your two feet. Never allow your scar to disqualify you. It's a proof that you've got a fighting spirit. Some people are waiting for bad news, but ladies and gentlemen, they're going to wait for a long time because we're not allowing our scars to disqualify. It's a proof I can fight. It's a proof I fought. It's a proof that I fell, but I'm back on my feet. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? Hallelujah. Number seven, scar sometimes is a reminder of the various battles and hardship you have been through. The severity of a scar is dependent on the severity of your journey. Sometimes I hear people who talk, they say, I don't want to ask at me, I don't like him, you know, she's, you don't know what I've gone through. Sometimes I hear people, they look at your small mistake and they don't know the deep wounds you are carrying so the deeper your scar is the deeper the journey you've gone through you know let them see whatever they want to say let them talk big let people brag let people blow their homes but my dear brother my dear sister the bigger your scar is the connotations of the amount of fight you have to go through i speak on behalf of majority of us don't allow your scar to disqualify be proud of it it speaks of the journey you've gone number eight now most scars are telling of the uh, the horrifying journey or damaging period of seasons of your life everybody must understand that every wound it's a damaging experience. Every scar is a damaging experience. But you know what? You've gone through it. You 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 have the t-shirt now. You've got the badge now. So if that couldn't kill you, then no devil can kill you. If that cat wound, if that gunshot, if that friendly fire didn't kill you, then I'm you brother nothing can stop you i'm telling you if that thing didn't take away your joy you know sometimes when people do some small wrong they want to stop serving god they want to they don't want to come to church listen to me let let, let it go past beyond that because god is not a schoolmaster he said come all ye who are heavy laden if you are tired come if you are broke he wants scars so that he will turn them into stars. He wants pain so that he will turn them into gain. He wants limitations so that he will make them manifestations. He wants your story so that he will turn them into your glory. Never allow your scars to disqualify you from the journey of being at where God wants you to be. Let's see now. Every second, every scar is a significant symbol of restoration. Everybody, if you if you are by yourself, and sometimes if you look at just look at some of the scars that you've had, you know, if you can see some of the scars you had, it means that the body, your soul, some of us, the scars cannot be seen with the physical eye, but you know what you went through. If you look back all the way down 1982 if you look all the way down 2016 if you look all the way down 2013 if you check your life 2020 and where you are you know that you have rebuilt <laughs> you know you are remodeling you know that you are a comeback model you are not the only Mother, you are a new fashionable mother. I remember many years ago when we were young, there was this dresses that when you wear it's so big, it, it collect all. It, I mean, the dresses were so big that 
you know. And then all of a sudden, I was still young, and then the new trousers came, and now it becomes smaller. <laughs> and then he was, and I'm wondering what happened to the old one. It was a restoration of an old lady. God is about to restore somebody that which the cankerworm and the caterpillar had eaten. God will restore you. Never allow your scars. I mean, just look at yourself. Your exes, your people, people that know you, they, they, they were expecting by now. You would have been crazy walking down the street, but you become more fashionable. As one of us, you are looking more sporty. Oh, Jehovah. You are looking more beautiful. You are looking more better than you used to be. My God, today, the brother that walked out of your life, the sister that walked out of your life. Oh, we are not trying to be rude, but see what the Lord has done. When you walked away, when you left me, or when you left us, you thought we were going to fold up. And no, oh, brother, the Lord had been faithful. The Lord is my light and my salvation. What shall man do unto me when my enemy come like a flood? The Bible said that God that called me, he will live up a standard tonight. I want you to know that your scar is a sign of your restoration. My God, brother, whatever they did to you, you don't need to retaliate. I don't retaliate. Some of us, you are too quick to fight your own battle. The Bible says, be still and know that I am God. Moses told the Egyptians that this Moses told Israelites that this Egyptians you see, you shall see them again no more, even forever. Moses was telling them that the sky is about to bring them restoration. I pray for somebody tonight. Don't you give up on God. God is able to do the exceedingly. Your God is able to do the abundantly. Your God has the ability to turn all things around for your good. Your scar is not to depress you. Your scar is your springboard for greater things to come. Oh my God, today I give God praise. Number 10, the benefit of your scar is that your scar potentially defines who you are. Oh yes, your scar defines who you are. Sometimes when I'm talking to people and then they know what I mean, they're talking and they say, wow, really? I say, yes, we went through that, I went through that, I went through that, and still by the grace of God. You know, <laughs> sometimes when you people don't know you, they think this is just rare, this is just dusty. That no, there is so much to you. Your scars define who you are. Your scars speak volume as man about your scar is your prophet. Your scar is your reception. Your scar is your receptor. Your scar is the key to the future. May the Lord bless you tonight and give God praise for your life. Now, this is the subject that we want to see tonight. So, how God turns scar people into stardom. You know, the word stardom means stars. How does God take flawed matter? How does God take some, some reckless, broken sinners like us and make us who we are? How does he pick us up out of the merry clay? How does God raise greatness out of weakness? How does God use his people who were bound to hell but turn them around? The Bible said that he came to his own. His own did not receive him, but as many of us who did receive him to us, gave he the power to become sons and daughters of God. I've got a register here in, in this part of the world. We call it register. Where I grew up, it's called roaster or roll call. I've got a roaster here, a roll call that I'm going to mention. The first one on my list is a woman called Rahab. The Bible speaks of Rahab as a prostitute who God used to advance his kingdom agenda. Who will be a key in the life of the Messiah? Can you imagine? 
if the sister, if today, uh, God forbid, but if, he, if anybody gets to know that within your secular environment or within your circle of friends, if any of your acquaintance is a prostitute, you, you are in trouble. But the Bible said God went as far down and picked up a prostitute. Can we just can we do a scripture for me, please? Matthew chapter 1, verse 5. Majority of us may not know, but the Bible mentioned the genealogy of Jesus. And the Bible and Simon begat Boaz by Rahab. So this Rahab is mentioned in the genealogy of Jesus. So who are you to condemn us? <laughs> who are you to raise you? It, it God, by his ultimate power, omni power, omnipotent, took a prostitute, back to the power, put, put a prostitute in the genealogy of the most purest, <laughs> most holiest, most powerful man ever. Then who are you? So God took a, a prostitute. She had so many scars, so many shameful experiences, but yet God was in the shame of her deeds. Number two on my roll call or register today is Abraham. The Bible said the man was so fearful that <laughs> that lady got to a point that he had given up and he told his wife, said, you know what, can you bring Hagar? Let's put Hagar substitute. Yet God called him. I'm not, I'm not advocating for us to be doing crazy stuff, but I want you to know that within your sky, God can he use you and make it into a star? I pray for somebody today. Yes, the Bible said God is a holy God, but this God went down and picked people like Abraham who did some kind of so bad by going into Hagar, by sending I and Ishmael and his mom away, and yet God call him a man of faith. So your deeds are not so much that God cannot use. God can take you and turn you into a mighty nation if and only if you trust in the Lord and lean not onto your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. Oh yes, God I made a mistake. Help me, oh God. I felt the Lord you are. You see, my has a way of trying to make you feel guilty. Your friends will make you feel guilty. Even your pastor will make you feel guilty. Your church friends, they will speak as an entrelize. You know, they will make you feel that you've done the most sinable thing on earth. But God has a way of turning your morning into dancing. God has a way of lifting you up and putting you on the rock to establish your stay. God has a way of turning your trials into your triumph. So Abraham, if Abraham is out there as the father of faith, you are not too far from what God is about to do. Can I hear somebody out there say hallelujah? Number three, I was checking this roll call, this register. And I came around my, my closest buddy in the Bible is Moses. I like Brother Moses. <laughs> the Bible said that he, he God used him mightily. <laughs> but the man was a hot-headed man. <laughs> the man, Moses, was a hot-headed stutterer and murderer. But God called him <laughs> to do one of the greatest miracles ever in human world history. So you are not fighting. You may have too many bad things for you, but if and only if you avail yourself, God can use you, brother. Let them say everything they want to say, yes. Let them talk about you. Some of us, we talk, some of us, people thought that you were crazy. Others thought that you had lost your mind. They said that you are psycho. My God. They said that you are losing it, but they didn't know that God was working on the inside. He was doing his own thing. Yes, if Moses was called by God as the meekest man, the same Moses got so much anger. Instead of speaking to the rock, the Bible 
Bible says he struck the rock. Why? Because the man had so much quick temper. God turned his scar and made him a star. I speak to somebody out there tonight. You've got to be strong. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? Then I came to Gideon. Gideon is one of the most timid, most scared men in the Bible and who had been marred by poverty. And his perception about God was that if God is with us, where be all his miracles? But the Bible said God used Gideon anyway. The next slide, please. God used Gideon anyway. Thank you. And then I come to my favorite as well. His name is David. David has so much wrong in his life. The man has so much wrong that he killed the man, took his wife, killed the man in battle. That man was so bad. But the Bible said he grew very old and they wanted to make sure that the man was alive. They threw a young lady into his bed. And when the man moved, they said the man is not dead. He said, yet God said he's a man after my own heart. Ladies and gentlemen, these men carry scars. Let's get to the next one. Jonah, Jonah. The Bible said that he was a man God sent to Nineveh. I mean, Jonah is a story just close to prejudice and racism in the Bible. He didn't want the Ninevites to be saved. He was like, who are these people to receive grace? But yet God gave him one of the most Excellent chauffeur. I mean, God sent a whale to carry him. My God, so whatever is your scar tonight, oh Jehovah, I want to believe that God is looking at somebody either in their living room or their bedroom. You've done so much wrong. You've committed so much evil. There is so much wrong about you. You don't believe in yourself, but God believes in you. Oh, pastor, man of God, woman of God, sister, brother, uncle, whoever you are, you may have done so much wrong, but God is not a man to forget your labor of love. God will not give up on you. I know this God. If he can use a Rahab, he can use you, dear sister. If he can use a Moses, he can use you, brother. If he can use a David, then God will use you also. So let's see, how do you turn, or how does God turn your scars into stardom? Number one thing that you need to Qualify yourself into that experience that have faith in God. <laughs> oh, brother, your scar may look hopeless or may make you hopeless, yet believe God, Jehovah, Jehovah. The Bible says in Hebrews, Rahab the Halot, <laughs> and he believed God, she believed God, even though the Bible could have omitted the word Halot. Or prostitute, but the Bible uses that qualification and say what made her into the hall of fame of the Bible. It's not her deeds, it's not her job, but what brought Rahab into stardom is her fate. Hallelujah. You know, I'm not sure, but majority of believers are losing their faith. Majority of people are allowing little misdemeanors, the little wrongs. We don't allow a church member to judge you. She is not the judge. Don't allow a pastor. Don't allow a sister who is saying, a brother who prays, a pastor who is also believing God to judge you. Have faith in God. The Bible says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Ladies and gentlemen, this whole transaction, this whole believer race, this whole journey, it's not facts, it is faith. The fact is that I'm weak. The fact is that I did wrong. The fact is that I'm too bad. But by faith, oh Jehovah, I will trust in the Lord and I will not lean on my own understanding. I will believe in the hand of the 
living God. Some trust in chariots, others believe in horses, but our confidence is not in the pastor. Our confidence is not in the church. Our confidence is not in the people. Majority of us, you are leaving your Christian faith based on people's belief. Whether they like you, the church is good. Whether they sing with you, no. You can walk away. You can do whatever you want to do. If God be for me, who can be against me? The Bible said that he will neither leave me nor forsake me. Ladies and gentlemen, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. With everything but you trust the Lord. Tonight I submit to somebody out there. If Rahab, if David, if Moses, if, 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 if Gideon and all of them can be and Samson can be in the hall of faith. The ladies and gentlemen, the qualifying criteria is not their name. It's not because they were Jewish people. It is because of their faith. So you may have some scars on your body, scars in your life, scars in your education, wherever you have your scars on your mind. Your mom was poor, your dad was poor. Somebody out there may have done you evil, but God can turn your scars. I don't know what you have done, girl, but believe God. Trust in him. Let God be the judge. Don't let pastor be the judge. Don't let that sister be the judge. Who is she to judge you? Trust in him. Believe God. Yes, the Mary Magdalene in the Bible. The Bible says seven demons were cast out of her and her name was mentioned more than some apostles. So who are you to judge yourself? Believe in the Lord your God. Trust in the Lord your God. Yes, you may have moments of weakness, but don't allow any man to be the judge. I give God praise for your life, brother. I give God praise for your life, sister. Your faith is not common. Let me read something here. Faith is trusting God to do his word. It is putting a demand on demonstration of our confidence in God. Majority of us, you are looking for the approval of men. You are, you are, you are, no, don't look for man's approval. Look for God's ultimate grace. If God is on your side, everybody else can walk away. Yes, yes, you can, you, you can be down the but lift your eyes onto the hills from witness cometh your help. Your help is in the name of the Lord. I give God praise for your life wherever you are. Just give God the glory and join yourself in the presence of the Almighty God. Oh, may the Lord bless your life and let you. Let's see the next one. So, the antidote to your scars, the antidote to hopelessness, the antidote to whatever you have is, is fate. <laughs> It's not in your cleverness. It's not in you. You know, majority of us are trying to please God. You know, it's just walk by faith, not by sight. Hallelujah. Let's see the second thing you need to do. If you check Rahab, you check David, Moses. What is the second thing that they did to get themselves from being from scars to star? The second thing they did is that be strong in the Lord. Majority of us, it's like there's, there's a story in the Bible. Jesus told somebody that uh, 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 do they believe they can be healed? The Bible said, the person said that, help my unbelief. Majority of us don't know how to be strong in the Lord. To be strong in the Lord here means that, uh, uh, you know, strength is not governed by your external conformity, but by your heart surrounded to the will of God. What is your strength in the majority of us? Our strength is in our car. Our strength is in our credit facility. 
Our strength is how people have accepted us. Oh, the people like me, pa. You know, the way our people say, they like me. Oh, oh they like me, pa. That is yours. So the day a sister shows disapproval, it's like you are in trouble. But you see, when you get to a point that your strength is not in the external bit, your strength is inside. When your strength is inside, you have an absolute trust that yes, I may not be the perfect person, but God will not forsake me. <laughs> that is strength. <laughs> that is strength that I may not have all it takes, but I know whom I have believed. The faithful is he who called me, who will also do it. Yes, I don't have all that it takes. I may not speak like pastor. I'm not too charismatic. As for me, I'm too bodor. But by the grace of God, I'm trusting in the arm of God. Can I hear somebody say hallelujah? What is, what is be strong in the Lord? This is learning to trust him completely. If you are there and you've gone through series of experiences, yes, the experience will not stop. The, 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 the trial will not stop. But in every stage of the trial, don't trust in your certificate. Don't trust in the government where you are. Don't trust in the man or a woman, but learn completely to trust in the Lord. That is what the psalmist said, that when I walk through the valley of shadow of death, the Bible said, thy rod and thy staff shall comfort me. Man will walk away from you. People will step back. But when you have scars, when you have things on your life, when you've gone through deeds in life that sometimes it depresses you, it makes you feel guilty, learn to trust in the Lord. Learn to keep your confidence in God. Learn to say to yourself that even if my mom and my dad forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. The Lord is my light and my salvation. What shall man do unto me when my enemy rose up to eat my flesh? The Bible said they stumble and they fell. That is how to trust in the Lord. You are leaning on the mighty arms of God. May the Lord bless you tonight wherever you are. We give God praise for your... Let's see point number three. How do you turn your scars into stardom? How does God turn it around? God wants you to have a winning mindset. <laughs> what is a winning mindset? There's a scripture, famous one. Jeremiah 29 verse 11. <laughs> it's a very famous scripture. And I believe that when you have that mindset, <laughs> the Bible says in Jeremiah 29 verse 11, uh, it says, for I know, I know the thoughts <laughs> that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of not evil to give you a future but you are not dying now <laughs> of course you are not dying now <laughs> ah sister you know go die now god say i'm thinking of a future and a hope for you oh that is the state of your mind that should be your mindset a mind that is determined that by the grace of god at the end of the road God will give me a future and the hope. May the Lord bless you tonight. My time is getting to an end, but I just want to trust God that uh, the word of God to you tonight is that God can turn your scars into stardom. When you constantly, when you constantly hear this over and over, tell yourself all the time that God will not forsake me. Tell yourself when you don't feel like sometimes you don't even have a scripture sometimes you don't even have a word sometimes you don't even feel like praying you don't even feel like going to church club you don't even feel the best keep on telling yourself i've got a future and i've got hope <laughs> i've got a future in god he's preparing a way for me he will make when you constantly repeat that to yourself oh the Bible 
Bible says he will make the mountains skip like rams. He will make a way where there is no way. He will go before you and prepare the way for you. My God, tonight I feel that somebody out there who have been guilty over the week, guilty over the month of something, some deed, something that you've done, it's become like a scar on your mind today. I think that you will say to yourself, God is able to turn all things around for my good. The Bible said there is no condemnation against those who are in Christ. God did not send Jesus to condemn you. So don't allow your past, your deeds, even your sins, whatever you think is as I am, to stop you from giving. Who is he that commands? Who is the judge? Who is he that is judging you? He sent his only begotten son to die. He died not just for himself, but what you did, what you are about to do, and what you are doing is all being paid for. We give God praise wherever you are. Just bless the name of the Lord tonight. We give him praise. We give him glory. We give him all the adoration. And finally, how do you turn your scars into stardom? Be willing to go beyond your scar. The majority of us have stopped at your scar. You sit down and when you look at your scar, like the Africans do, they will kiss their teeth. Ha, ha, ha. They will look at themselves and say, hmm, sometimes be willing to go beyond your scars. Yes, the Bible said he knows the end from the beginning. He said, when you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew thee. When you came from a new day, which means everything you were going to do, he knew it, yet he allowed it. Ladies and gentlemen, go beyond your scar. Don't allow it to break you down. Men may try to break you down. We will try to use it against you, but just go beyond your scars. May the Lord bless you till my time is up. Hopefully by the grace of God, next week, same time. But you want to bless the Lord. You want to give him glory tonight. You want to exalt his holy name tonight. I don't know where you are, what you're doing. Maybe you're watching this program after the live telecast. I want you to just begin to bless the name of the Lord. Just give him glory. Exalt his holy name. Just thank him for what he's about to do and what he's doing in your life. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you all the glory. We exalt your holy name today. We thank you for good things. We thank you for all things. We thank you for tomorrow. We thank you for today. We thank you for tomorrow, the day after yesterday. We give you all praise and all glory. I pray for the brother listening to me. I pray for the sister sitting in your living room. I pray for the brother, wherever you are, I pray for you that your scar is not the end of the story. As one of us is the beginning of the story. God can turn your scar into stardom. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord increase you. May the Lord turn around your morning into dancing. May it become good with you. May God make it good with you. I bless you and your family and the works of your hand. Same time next week, we'll be back. Stay strong in the power of his mind. Hallelujah, hallelujah.